All right, wrapping up this 14 hour day, life of an entrepreneur, baby. Jeez, you know, I'm really glad we opened up this new office, man. Now I can get to use this pager. Hey everybody, my name is Smart Guy. I am locking up the office time. It's midnight, it's midnight. I am going home. Appreciate you guys putting a lot of hard work today. I am locking up. If you're still here, let me know. Peace out. What the heck? I turned off my light. I protect myself. Somebody here still, man? No, nobody's in here. I'm sensing this. Grenade. Check. Night vision goggles. Check. Let's rock. MVG time. What the heck is that? I've had a lot of experiences from building this business from my two bedroom apartment to eventually building a 12,000 square foot office, not just locally, but also across the country. Stay tuned. How to start your own office coming at you in this episode of Living Money Smart. Over the past 19 years, I've had many different experiences of growing my business, starting from a practitioner, a solopreneur, and then graduating to becoming an entrepreneur instead of just working for myself, having an opportunity to scale, but not just have a bigger local presence, but being able to duplicate this in multiple areas regionally, and now we're at nationally. So if you're looking to expand your office, looking to expand your business, becoming a solopreneur, into becoming an entrepreneur, you're watching the right video on how to start your own office. So this was our very first office here at Clearwater Drive. We rented a $600 office and then we grew and we rented a cubicle outside of the office for a total of $1,000 a month rent. But uh, a lot of new bodies, a lot of new fresh ideas were fostered right out of this office. The beginnings of the Money Smart Movement team here at PHP Agency. So this was our next office right here at One Tower Lane. Amazing office, class A building, tallest building outside of downtown, I think in three different states. And we're thinking about going to the classy route, you know, helping people with money, insurance, recruiting, all that stuff. We thought this swag here would actually attract a lot more people. And for the most part, it did work. So this is our third office after coming from the executive suite at One Tower Lane over here to 1450 West 22nd. We went from executive suite into a 2100 square foot office. And the crazy part about that is in one year after signing a five year lease, we outgrew that space too as well. Five year lease, sublease it, get rid of it because we're moving on to a bigger office space. 5,200 square foot coming up. And after stuffing that 2,100 square foot office at the Oprah Regency Tower, we moved into this location, a Class B office space located right here in Oprah Terrace, which went from 2,100 square feet to right here, which is 5,200 square feet. Very expansive office space. We've got a right wing, we built a boardroom and we built a training area as well. But the crazier part, due to growth, our system, and the excitement of being an entrepreneur, being an entrepreneurial agent, we outgrew this office space in five months. And we went from 5,200 square feet to 12,000 plus square feet office space right here on the second floor of the current building we're at right now. We signed a seven year lease. And due to the growth of our office again, we're already facing another max capacity because every office here with inside our office space is already rented out by independent entrepreneurial agents. There's some uh, experiences here I'd love to share with you guys on how to start your own office. I, and I hope that it saves you a lot of time and it saves you a lot of money. One of my first offices when I started my business uh, back in 1999 coming out the Marine Corps 
was working on my, my two bedroom apartment. I didn't need a brick and mortar location. I literally ran this business out of my two bedroom apartment, set appointments at my kitchen table, and then I met people at a local Starbucks, a Panera Bread, a Denny's, or an IHOP. You know, side note, I used to call IHOP, I hope, because I hope I get a client that day. But make a long story short, what's, what's, what you need to do in terms of running your own business as a solopreneur, you have to learn how to concentrate in your location, especially if it's your house. The benefit of working out of your home is there's no commuting. You save a lot of time uh, and gas. The flip side to that, if you really want to grow your business, you, you need to really consider having an office location. And what I realized is that investing in my business as an entrepreneur actually grew my mindset, my mentality, my attitude, because you know why? Success without process, success without an investment is void, invalid, and short term. Because when I started investing in my business, I, as an entrepreneur, expected a rate of return on my investment. When I was just being cheap, when I was just skating, when I was just looking to get by, my business didn't grow, I was paycheck to paycheck. But as soon as I invested my money in my business, my business started to take off. At the same time too as well, you can never make a first impression twice. And when I saw clients, when I recruited my team and started building my business out of a professional environment, I was able to make a favorable first impression and therefore people took me a lot more seriously from the beginning. You don't need a brick and mortar location, you need a retail location to get your business started, especially the insurance injury is such a service-based type of business. And it's not like people are coming out of the world like you do for your barber uh, to do business with you. But you can start off small, but not too small. We started our business doing seminars in restaurants and hotel rooms and we started graduating to bigger and bigger venues, started building relationships, started building some business credit. And then what happens is we started taking that business credit and we built some reputation with a local executive office or what we call a shared or co-working space. They saw our ability to pay rent on time, they saw our ability to pay invoices. My first executive spot was a $600 a month cubicle. I built my business out of a $600 cubicle. Then my vision started growing. I started attracting new partners. I started attracting new relationships. I remember a client looking at my chair, look at his chair. He says, man, I like your chair. Because when you and I get up from our chairs, I go back to my dead end job. But you getting up from your chair, even though it looks the same as mine right now in this boardroom, you get up from your chair and you do whatever you want. So you know what, man, I need to attract this guy to my business. I need to recruit and train to develop a system to bring on new people. And that's how my agency started to grow. Then you graduate to your own standalone office where they're gonna look through your financials. They're gonna live a little bit more stringently through your bank accounts. They're gonna look a little bit more stringently in how you make, how you make your money, what your expenses are. So therefore you can afford your own standalone lease. But uh, it's exciting to see our business grow based on systems and processes. More importantly, our landlord is very happy because we keep paying rent consistently. We're filling up office space. There's new energy in our building and we have a sustainable business that this landlord can attract other business to office next door to us to make his life easier too as well as a landlord and a property owner. And when I say small, but not too small, you gotta think of future growth, future expansion. Just don't think about you and your two staff or you and your two or three different agents or you just you and your copy machine and, and your computer. You gotta think about expansion and growth and you don't wanna be stuck to a very small office where you're actually stifling your growth. Think about the neighbors to the left and to the right of you. Think about across the street. Think about across the hallway. You could maybe just uh, sometimes... Keep it down. All right. Think about different spaces within inside a building that you can take a lease. And think about uh, having a conversation with a landlord saying, listen, uh, I've outgrown my business. My business is growing. Can I transfer this lease into a new space? So don't think too small, but think expansion and growth in a short near future. The very cool thing about a service-based insurance business is that there's really no inventory that you need. It's not like there's a warehouse that you need to store life insurance or a warehouse where you need to store 401k and retirement plans. Listen, the only inventory that you have is equipment to run your office. When you're talking about equipment, we're talking about voice over IP network versus an analog phone. Voice over IP saves us a lot of money, but what do you have to buy? You gotta buy servers, you gotta buy switches, and you need IT support because here's the deal. If the internet is down, so is your phones. So it's something to be thinking about. The second part about that is not only do you have internet wires running through your office, but you also have to choose an internet provider. Another part of this is, is printer. Uh, the downside of having a, a group printer versus a self printer is that you gotta make sure you have a printer in a secured location. You don't want people's personal information and all that stuff flying around the office. So therefore having an individual printer for your client business uh, and for your uh, recruitment of agents uh, is, is important versus a group printer where everybody has access to the printer in a common area. And one of the most important things about your new office space, your own standalone space, is a layout. I've been to many different office buildings, as pretty as they may look on the outside, when you actually go into the building, they have this weird jagged layout of the actual office space. We went to uh, class A office spaces and now we're in a class B office space, but the class B office space inside looks like a class A office space because the layout is much more easier to manage and much more easy for people to get around. And for those of you who are feng shui lovers, a lot easier for you to have positive energy flow 
in your office space. The second thing too as well, you have to get your team on board. When, I, when we went from a 600 square foot office to a 1200 to a 2100 to a 5200 to a 12,000 square foot office in a three, four year period, I always asked the team I was recruiting and building. I was always asking my staff that I was recruiting and hiring and training. What type of office do you want to be? What type of culture? What type of team? What type of organization? What type of reputation do you guys want to have? I've got an idea. What do you have? In the back of my mind, going through this process, maybe see who's going to be with me for the short term. I go out and recruit that team so therefore I can develop them for the long term. But anyway, make a long story short, having your team on board with you makes this process of scaling a whole lot more easier when everybody is on the same page, same mission, and everybody's excited about the growth. Instead of it being your office, they're taking ownership and saying, well, this is my office too as well. And now it's time to negotiate your lease terms. I've done both. I've self-represented myself to a landlord and I've gone through a broker. And I'll tell you this, I learned a lot of expensive mistakes through the broker. So my personal experience, working with the attorney directly with the landlord, there's less games in my experience. Now I could be wrong, you gotta go out and find out this yourself. But in my experience, there's been less games for me having an attorney negotiate directly with a landlord. Another part of the negotiations is the length of time you're actually going to be in that office space. Now they're gonna negotiate with you a more favorable term if it's longer for like say three, four, five years. The longer the length of time for that office lease, three, four, five, six, seven years, the more happy a landlord is or the broker is to negotiate terms in your favor to get you in that office space without having a huge chunk of money from you all up front. The next one is understand what type of amenities are available in the building. Do you have access to the conference room? Is there a gym in the building, right? Is there, is there parking? That needs to be negotiated. You also want to find out what type of access you have to the building. Do I have 24 hours, seven day a week access to my office? What's considered ordinary usage? Because one of the office buildings we had, pretty building, but they started getting upset at us when our office started blowing up and we had a lot of foot traffic coming through the office and we started violating what they considered ordinary usage. So therefore, you want to be very clear what access, common areas, and what common usage is based on the terms of the lease before you sign a dotted line. All right, so it's all said and done. You sign the dotted line. Everybody in your office and staff is excited about your new office space. Time for a what? Time for a grand opening. Unlike most retail businesses, an insurance agency has to have a lot of attention when people are thinking about money, thinking about people about moving, think, people think about the changes in their financial life. You want to make sure they're thinking about you. My suggestion, you build relationships with the businesses in your town to create grab bags, to create buzz, to create them attendance to your grand opening, create some new connections and relationships and expose to them what you're doing in the neighborhood. Last time we created a grand opening, we had a couple senators come to our office. We had a personal friend of mine, a judge come out to the office. We had some, uh, some influencers and in social media come out, live stream there, create a Twitter party, create live stream videos, have some fun at your grand opening. And therefore, the awareness about what you're doing in business, starting your new agency, beginning your new office, is all around your local community. Well, there you have it. I'm interested in what you guys are thinking. I'm interested in what your experiences are. So let's connect. Let me know what your thoughts are. With that being said, thanks for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe to our channel. Make sure you like our Facebook page. And make sure you subscribe to us on Instagram. And make sure you comment below what your thoughts and ideas are too as well in growing your business in the insurance industry in the modern marketplace today. Until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today. Mm -hmm.